Welcome to Game 2 between Ash Sabbath and Laser Snipe. This is BSL Season 12 Chobo League Group D. Whoever wins this will advance to the winner's match. Whoever loses moves on to the loser's match. This is on Polypoid. Upper right hand corner we have Ash Sabbath starting as the Pink Terran aka Turrets. Which I am, again, not super familiar with his play. Bottom left hand corner we have Laser Snipe starting as the Green Protoss. This is on Polypoid. Four player map. I actually... I have a favorite in this game, and I feel like I should say that outright. I am favoring Laser Snipe just because of all of the work he does with CPL. That's Coach Pupil League, which if you have not heard me rant about it before, if you want to learn StarCraft, that is the place to do it. I actually need to just stop commentating for a while, stop filling that with my free time, and stop playing Slay the Spire and start going into CPL and learning that sort of stuff. But if you have free time, if you're looking for a hobby, if you're looking to link into an awesome community of StarCraft players. Oh, man, the explosion of the Kakaroo right above the SCV. If that's not, uh, is that a bad omen or is that a blessing? I'm not sure. I'm going to lean towards more of the blessing side, the exploding uh, hallucinated bird of flight. Why do they even have those? It's just fun to have in the map, I guess, for commentators to go wild about. Anyway, bottom left corner, we do see it looks like a gateway opener inside base for Laser Snipe. Not doing anything to proxy or crazy. Laser Snipe. Losing to Sabbath game one. Looks like Sabbath is going to put down a preventative kind of barracks wall so you can run that Marine in between to deal with that initial Protoss. But yeah, game one, Sabbath looked like he was initially thinking about taking a third base. It looked like initially he was kind of sneaking towards a positional play, but then suddenly shifted into a full-on contain and a game win over Laser Snipe as Laser Snipe was trying to play a long macro game. You have... Laser Snipe, who's just trying to be the honorable, I guess, is there such thing as an honorable Protoss? Going for the honorable long-term macro Protoss play in game one, and it ended up costing him just because it is, I just feel like it is very difficult these days for Protoss to deal with, I, I mean, that's always the case, but in particular these days with a lot of the upgrade timing attacks and things along those lines, and on maps where it's kind of your, you can kind of as a Terran expand into your opponent, things like that, I don't know. Uh, it just feels like it's, at least at this level of play, it is challenging for Protoss to deal with Terran and a lot of the shenanigans they can pull. That has been my observation of just being able to uh, watch everything. I feel like once you get up above this level, just slightly, then it's the opposite problem, where Arbiters become such an issue, just the Zealot Micro becomes such an issue, etc., etc. And I think that is where Artosis laments. Although, do check out the Artosis versus Mars OP or not uh, questionnaire. Bottom right-hand corner. Scout for Sabbath, and then immediately going for a cross scout. I That's interesting play. I'm wondering what the decision-making was there. I don't know if he saw that probe or not, but he's going to end up with a very late scout as a result, trying to block out this probe with two Marines. One Marine is going to engage it initially. Doesn't block the ramp, though. Oh, SCV is there to get the last touch block to kill that probe. So two Marines have been spotted, but nothing else. We do have the Cybernetics Core whirling. No Zealot. As of yet, Laser Snipe actually, is he going to go straight up expansion? Okay, no, he is going to go for Dragoon first. Is moving out another probe. Factory first for Sabbath. He's going to drop a machine shop. He's already got that command center building. So playing a little bit risky here, considering he's more or less in the dark. Initial Dragoon. So did I miss an initial Dragoon build? I guess I missed the initial Dragoon. Trying to catch that SEV scout. Unfortunately, it is not going to do enough damage to prevent this SEV from first wandering in and catching the Nexus, and secondarily, wandering straight into the main and noticing that there is only a single gateway. And I almost feel like from Sabbath's side of things, this is this was I know Laser Snipe uh, Laser Snipe's style of play build because that command center was very risky to take. Consider just very risky play going for a command center which is a handful of Marines without any additional support. Laser Snipe. Losing a little bit of Dragoon Shield that should recharge in plenty of time. But yeah, single machine shop up, building the initial tank to just go into four of a, at least a defensive two base opening with that range. And let's see if he moves out with this additional Dragoon. With the range and the Dragoon in position as it is, he is going to be able to get some free damage on the bunker. And SCV is now transferring to the natural expansion, an early armory. I believe this is an early army from Sabbath. So I'm wondering if we're going to see a more of a seven minute, eight minute, kind of an earlier timing attack. A lot of SCVs had minerals in their hands. Nice catch on Sabbath to go ahead and adjust it. The tank brushing that Dragoon back. It was only a single Dragoon, so Laser Snipe going back into defensive position. Second tank in production and the Academy on the way. Nexus up, looks like Laser Snipe not catching those uh, probes is moving across 
as well. Going up to three gateways, and he does have the dancing probe, the fidget disco probe, which is always fun. Going for robotics facility as well. And the question is, is does he go two gate robo? Or is he just going to go two gate observer? Currently, he's only got the three dragoons on his front door. As his weapons one is moving, he is continuing to produce or keep up with that dragoon production. And there is only a single factory, that siege tech being upgraded here. I'm not seeing additional factories being saved up or plopped down for Sabbath, so it looks like I think he's going to, at this stage of things, just wait, get eyes on Snipe, and maybe play for a longer term. It's possible he's going to go for the longer term uh, double armory build. I'm wondering if he's going to drop a second armory as soon as level one weapons is finished, or it's possible he's going to go for just a slower long-term macro game because this is, in fact, Polypoid, sending out a second SCV scout perhaps wondering to see whether he's going to be engaging uh, three base Protoss or not. Second pylon warp down just in case some vultures are moving out. And you can see laser snipe, yeah, playing a very, I don't want to say passive, but a very defensive, very defensive macro-oriented Protoss style. He's already got that observer out. He's got the three gates down and has gone observatory flat. And it looks like he just wants to stick gateway man, dragoons, get that second assimilator, work out, get his third in a particular time. And three tanks have been produced for Sabbath, and he is grabbing that additional factory. Level one weapons, again, about halfway finished. And he is, yeah, creating a sizable force. Let's see if I, oops, missed it. So he does manage to get a scan over the gateway, so gets a good look at the three gateway and nothing more production out of laser snipe. Laser snipe has that assimilator up, doesn't have any probes in it just yet. Both players, yeah, just sitting back in pure, pure macro mode. Just gonna straight, so it's gonna be who macros better at this stage. Observer is gonna be able to get eyes in the base to see all of these siege tanks being built. And it looks like, yeah, this is what I was expecting. Sabbath actually gonna go for more of a positional play and perhaps go for just as mineral only. Command center already in production. And go for, maybe he'll turn around and wait for level two weapons, level one. Usually in this sort of thing, what happens is you'll have a Terran just sit back, get the upgrades, max out and move once they uh, have completely maxed out. Starport going down, so level two weapons can come on, on immediately. Still no second armory though, and that is going to be, that is gonna be significant. Goliath's coming down. The other thing with the Goliaths being produced, by the way, we see mineral only going up for laser snipe. The other thing with the Goliaths being produced is getting a, actually cancellation on one of the Goliaths, charm booster upgrade. It can push back some of that economic harassment that comes with the robotics facility. Um, additionally, it can help if you can get a good amount of them out as we do see laser snipe is moving his base moving his way towards three base arbiter has a stargate has a templar archives sev wandering the way around it should be able to get a scout and see this nexus being built currently as things stand players just about even protoss about i don't know 10 15 supply ish ahead which is really where you want to be it's not insurmountable he is going to have that nexus up before sabbath plants his nexus but if sabbath can saturate this get positioning and defend it Critically, if he can defend it, the Dragoon's moving out to go ahead and harass that third. Laser Snipe catching the timing fairly well. Unfortunately, I'm not sure that he's going to be there while the tanks are not sieged. He's still making his way across the map. This is usually, yeah. So he, he caught the timing right to go ahead and harass that third base. The Observer getting wiped out there, but I don't know that he's going to have the timing while the tr while the tanks and everything else are not in position. Moving up now, tanks are just sieging. Attacking the command center rather than the siege tanks, backing the bulk of his army off. And just missed that timing by, oof, five, ten seconds? Not a lot. Second bunker going down. It looks like it's going to be these additional three Marines in that bunker to provide additional defense and laser snipe immediately moving his Dragoons back to home base. But Sabbath, upon establishing this third base handily, puts laser snipe in a difficult position where, okay, he's going to go ahead and try to even things out by taking his six o'clock match or his six o'clock match, six o'clock nexus to go ahead and stay one base ahead. We do have... Uh, control tower here to perhaps get that science vessel out critically though for sabbath he okay now he has double upgrades running has level one weapons has all sorts of factories are going to be coming online he's got the three bases to work with he's just he can just sit back more or less and get to that 202 that 200 200 uh, spot with the mineral only at close location this is kind of what we see on polypoid a lot of times is terrence just shelling up Waiting until they have a massive army, waiting until they have the upgrades, and I feel like it's more on it's more on the Protoss, more or less, to make something happen. Pretty well saturated there. 
few seconds off that Nexus. He does have a, and here's the thing, Laser Snipe does have a handful of Dragoons, but what he needs to do is start pumping those Arbiters so that he can have a lot of stasis, a lot of energy uh, in those Arbiters to make something happen. First Arbiter in production right there. He is getting Zealot Leg Speed. He's also grabbing a Shuttle just in case Sabbath decided to get aggressive. Only has six, what is that, five gateways down. He's going to need more gateways to be able to contend. He's doing a pretty good job macroing. He's about 20 supply ahead still. But I don't feel like those supply advantages make much of a difference when Terran can shell up on a map like this. A couple tanks unseaged. Basically, all Sabbath has to do is, yeah, siege these tanks, keep those weapon upgrades, mine the front, and kind of play patiently from there. And again, I, I still feel like it's up to Laser Snipe to do something comparatively. He is going to hit that 200 supply point well before Sabbath does. The question is, is once he hits that 200 supply point, is he going to be able to do anything about it? Currently, he's also not staging up. Laser Snipe is not staging up for any sort of Gorilla Protoss style tactic. Uh, we do have a Vulture Speed being upgraded, so the Vulture is going to start wandering around the map to see what they can harass. I think Sabbath... I like Sabbath's play here. He's like, okay, this is the portion of the game in pure macro stage where Protoss might be trying to sneak additional bases to go ahead and set up for that Gorilla style comparative to what I've got rolling. Instead, he's going to get a little bit of map control by dropping a bunch of mines, preventing those additional expansions from going up. A couple Dragoons wandering out there. Ooh, looks like an Ursodon just getting... I don't even know what to call that. Just completely dissected. Some siege tanks here. I take it back. I missed the siege tanks. So Sabbath actually pushing up. But he's here before level 2 weapons and level 1 armor is there. I thought he was going to be more patient with this. The shuttle down before Zelts are able to get on top of this. But Laser Snipe able to get the Zelts on the back line of tanks. The Dragoons pressing in from the left. And... Big mistake from Sabbath, so going to end up losing his entire attack force on the front. Now his third base is going to be completely exposed. I'm sorry, I missed that because I didn't realize he had moved his entire army out. I thought that was just going to be a vulture force. Usually you do not see that before level 2 weapons and level armor comes online. And oftentimes you do not see that play when you're sitting on three bases before max supply. So Sabbath walking out caught me off guard. He's going to end up losing a lot for this. There's only two siege tanks there to the north. That's enough that Laser Snipe is going to go ahead and back off from this. But this is a big win from Laser Snipe. Some zealots marching their way up. And he might actually be able to just run past this. The vultures trying to sneak their way around and get what they accomplish with the can. There's only a single cannon to try to defend uh, to the south. There are some mines that could trip up these dragoons. There is an observer with them potentially. But it looks like Laser Snipe's happy to go ahead and sit back, push up to 30 supply. Now, here's the thing. Sabbath can just reset and again put... He does have these three machine shops. He is going to get some economic harass done at the 6 o'clock location. Are these Dragoons going to face plant into these mines? It looks like they are, in fact, going to do so. That's unfortunate. And a lot of probes getting absolutely annihilated here at the 6 o'clock location. That's going to give Sabbath a bit of breathing room to reestablish his economy. And, ooh, more mines going down. These mines are wiping out all sorts of units on laser snipe side really creating a lot of harassment and trouble looks like the june's going to go ahead and end around to try to catch the hey i finally did the zoom for you guys uh getting all sorts of damage completely shutting down the six o'clock base laser snipe finally regathering looking to re-engage the observer again not with the dragoons though is he going to be able to get this nexus with vultures only that would be a big win more mines being planted in a defensive situation so he doesn't have to worry about the counterattack. finally some dragoons getting in from both ends but this base has been shut down for what feels like nearly a minute in the midst of that attack. Probes finally re-saturated into the 6 o'clock. But while all this was happening, Laser Snipe wasn't taking a fourth base. I'm not sure that it matters because he is 30 supply ahead. Still hasn't gotten a second Stargate. Is starting to push the Arbiters. I feel like his Arbiter count is a little bit low. Sabbath trying to nakedly take this 3 o'clock base. He's still actually got production here at the main. Perhaps needing to do so because... Felt like, okay, I lost that entire, that entire army. I can't just sit in the 200, 200 supply situation. Laser Snipe's in a good situation here where he is going to hit 200 supply, though. Well, well, well before Sabbath has any sort of army to counter it. The upgrades are going to be very much in Sabbath's favor. So it's going to come down to map positioning, mine clearing, things along those lines. An observer taking a bit of damage and pulling uh, before pulling back. There is a science vessel to help deal with some of that Arbiter tech. There's only one Arbiter in the air. I'm a little concerned about that. I like what this Vulture is doing for Sabbath, though. Blockading that bottom right-hand corner. It looks like Laser Snipe going to take, again, a more defensive 9 o'clock base that he could reinforce and perhaps defend. EMP being upgraded because it looks like Sabbath. Yeah, definitely at this stage, shelling up to go towards that 200, 200 count. He's got all sorts of turrets 
being built. He's also getting EMP to deal with potential recalls. Laser Snipe, significantly ahead in supply. If he leads with the Zealots, he might be able to get this base. So can he lead with the Zealots on top of the tanks? So clearing the mines to the right. Getting on top of that bunker. The bunker down, those Marines are not going to last very long. The Zealots actually running all the way. Nice stasis in the background. And it looks like he's going to be able to take out this third base. And that might be what gives him the victory. Dragoons wailing on that command center. Wow. Command center completely down before there was even a chance to defend it or lift it off. SCVs moving. And actually, the SCVs, the SCVs are going to reveal that this third base is up. Laser Snipe might even be able to walk into that 3 o'clock base. With that exchange, though, Sabbath has managed to sneak ahead in supply. Is there enough for a recall? There might be enough for a recall momentarily. This Arbiter starting to work on that turret. Some Vultures making their way down to plant some mines to provide some counter recall defense. And Sabbath immediately retaking that interior mineral only. Unfortunately, with all of that exchange, it looks like Laser Snipe didn't keep up with his macro. So he's just now sneaking back to even. And with the difference in upgrades, that's going to give Sabbath a defensive advantage where he can again start walking to that 200 supply count and get what he's done. The Vultures just feasting on some Dragoons right now. And he, actually, it, you'd almost think that a Vulture didn't beat a Dragoon heads up with that last exchange. That 9 o'clock base is up. However, it is not mining. So more Dragoons moving up. Laser Snipe still playing Gateway Man because, of, wow, look at all this. So that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we got 12 Gateways. But And finally, a second Stargate up. I do worry about the lack of Arbiters in the air and their lack of energy as far as the ability to engage here. The Supply Depots right there to provide some defense. A recall has been executed. A handful of Dragoons and Zelts do get there. Some more units trying to come in. Is there going to be a second recall? Going to be able to try to clear some turrets before reinforcements can come in. SCVs are blockading against the Dragoons. Some more units trying to come. They're blockading themselves to the south. A nice EMP on them. And a nice... Stasis to block up that northern ramp and the Dragoons starting to march in They are going to be able to get a lot of damage here because this beautiful stasis by laser snipe at the three o'clock position Siege tanks trying to defend from a distance, but with some focus fire laser snipe might be able to take this three o'clock base out It is lifted off. That's going to disrupt mining at the very least I think Sabbath realizes it trying to back it off Allow these siege tanks on the background keep in mind There's also a misfire chance right there. The Dragoons just are having trouble getting up this ramp Annoying units. They are almost as dumb as Goliaths. I'm actually going to give the edge of stupidity to the Goliaths. SEVs, at, at the very least, all of this mining is disrupted. And we're seeing a counterattack now at the 6 o'clock base. That mineral only. A lot of vultures moving in. There is a pylon wall right there. There's some zealots moving in to go ahead and clear those mines. Some dragoons behind them. But some siege tanks and Goliaths are following. Sabbath wants to go in all in all again. Perhaps realizing that he... Can't win the long-term economic game. A defense matrix on the Vulture up front. Looking for good stasis. Good stasis hits a lot of the siege tanks in that back corner. And there's somewhat of a pincer force moving in from behind. The Zealot's moving in from the north. But it doesn't look like Laser Snipe has enough units to defend this. So it looks like he might end up losing his mineral only. The units are just filtering in one at a time. And against a siege tank line, that is not what you want to do. You just end up losing units one at a time. And it looks like Sabbath is going to be able to counterattack. He's all of a sudden 20 supply up. The SCV, or the SCVs, the probes are fleeing from the main, making their way to the natural. And I think Sabbath is going to be able to take this mineral only out. Laser Snipe ha is sneaking in Nexus in that upper left-hand corner. That's been spotted. That 9 o'clock base is producing for him. I don't think he can hold that upper left-hand base. He's trying to sneak to that bottom right-hand corner. But again, Sabbath was ahead of him a couple minutes ago to wipe that out. So now he's got level 2 weapons, level 1, level 3 weapons is going to be online in not too long. And he's basically got Laser Snipe boxed in once again. So Sabbath, upon losing that 3 o'clock base, is like, okay, I'm just going to counterattack. And he has managed to reestablish that. Is moving up with Siege Tanks and Vultures into the 9 o'clock as well. Go ahead and reset the view. Looks like the, the can is going to be wiped out. And Laser Snipe starting to gather an army at his natural expansion. And this is where I feel like that lack of Arbiters with the energy... A lot of that was expended in the recall with, uh, without the High Templar to drop some Psy Storms. Yeah, and with just ooh, only a single Siege Shank on that Psy Storm. A nice follow-up stasis, it looks like. Unfortunately, it's not accomplishing a lot, it feels like. Uh, that 9 o'clock base, very exposed, continues, uh, continues to dwindle in health and energy. And a handful, a split army here by Laser Snipe. I think he's having a little bit of trouble controlling it because he's got basically units splitting all over the place. 
to try to deal with Sabbath all over the place. He ended up losing that 9 o'clock base. Some Vultures and some Goliaths took care of that expansion in the upper left-hand corner. So now Laser Snipe has an empty main. He has an empty natural expansion. His 6 o'clock base is his only mining base. And he is 20 supply behind a highly upgraded Terran army that already has level 3 weapons. He does have level 2 weapons, but doesn't have a lot of Arbiters out in the air. And Sabbath, in the meantime, has his mineral only up. He has his 3 o'clock base up and running, and he has another large attack force starting to roam across, plus the attack force from his previous foray starting to move up to the last mining base for Laser Snipe. So Laser Snipe, in a dire situation here, he has a stream of Dragoons and Zealots trying to move their way in. There is Comsat to see that. There, So he is going to be able to clean at least this initial attack force from the previous... Engagement, I guess I'll call that Attack Force 1. This is Attack Force 2 moving its way across. And honestly, you can just set up camp at this natural expansion. And it is starting to just flood in here with a huge amount of vultures. There's GG from Laser Snipe realizing he just does not have enough forces to really push this through. And that is unfortunate. We'll see Laser Snipe in the loser's bracket. We will see Sabbath slash turrets in the winner's round. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, a bit depressing. I wanted to see uh, Laser Snipe pull through. Thanks for listening, guys.